There's a lot of debate in the hair loss community about what truly causes hair loss. On one side you have people saying that it's because of modern life, things like stress, artificial light, processed food and toxins, making the argument that animals don't go bald in nature. The other side is scientific leaning, saying it's mainly due to genetics and DHT miniaturizing follicles over time. So what's the actual truth? So here it is. Modern lifestyle can definitely make hair loss worse, but when it comes to classic male pattern baldness, the strongest evidence still points to DHT sensitivity being the main driver. Now let's be real about why this matters so much. A full head of hair is one of the biggest indicators of youth. Having a hairline that's low on the Norwood scale makes you look healthier, younger and more attractive. Hair also frames your face and when recession or crown thinning starts to come in, you start to look significantly older and worse, even if you're lean and in great shape. Now let's talk about the animals don't go bald in nature argument. It sounds good in theory, but it's not proof. Animals can lose hair for a variety of different reasons, but when it comes to male pattern baldness, there's always a specific pattern. In androgenic alopecia, the hair follicles at the temple area and crown are genetically more sensitive to androgens, specifically DHT. Over time, DHT binds to these follicles, causing the growth phase to shorten and the follicles to shrink. And then the hairs grow back thinner and weaker until they're basically miniaturized. So where do things like stress, blood flow, scalp tension and nutrition fit into the hair loss equation? Well, they matter, but usually as secondary factors. Obviously, if your sleep is terrible, you're chronically stressed, and you're deficient in key nutrients, you can definitely increase hair shedding. But in most guys with true male pattern baldness, fixing those things will not fully stop the recession, because the core mechanism is still DHT plus genetics. And DHT isn't bad per se, it's actually quite crucial during development and puberty, since it plays a major role in male sexual development, including things like penile growth and facial hair growth. But after you're fully developed, DHT becomes much less important compared to testosterone for most day-to-day -day male functions. And for men who are genetically prone, it will contribute to hair follicle miniaturization. So it's not that DHT is entirely useless, it's that your hair follicles just might be overly sensitive to it. So what can you actually do to start hair maxing effectively? Well, you want to start with the basics that support hair growth, such as eating enough protein, since keratin is the main structural component of hair, and avoid crash dieting of any kind, since that can contribute to hair loss. Make sure your micronutrient intake is solid, because first and foremost, your body prioritizes survival and hair growth afterward. Prioritize sleep, because this is when the majority of hair growth actually happens. And then make sure to fix your circadian rhythm by getting morning sunlight, having consistent sleep and wake times, and avoiding excessive UV exposure on the scalp, because sun damage and irritation won't help with hair growth. Let's move on to the proven tools that you can use to regrow your hair. Minoxidil is clinically supported for regrowth, and when combined with microneedling, it will work even better, since it improves absorption and can simulate growth signaling in the scalp. But if you want a more natural option, rosemary oil seems quite promising. There are some studies showing it can be just as efficacious as minoxidil. But if your temples are still receding and your crown hairs are thinning, despite fixing everything such as your diet, sleep, and trying all of the hair regrowth remedies, you're most likely dealing with classic DHT-driven hair loss. That's when you need to consider opting for the more nuclear solutions, such as finasteride and dutasteride. Finasteride is usually the more commonly prescribed drug to lower DHT, but if the Norwood Reaper is truly coming for your hair, with no pity, you need to opt for dutasteride, since it blocks 90% plus of DHT in your scalp. These are without a doubt the most effective drugs for targeting hair loss, 
but they obviously come with risks and side effects. So do your own research and consult a doctor and track if you experience side effects over time. So that's the truth. Your lifestyle can not influence how much hair you lose, but the main driving factor is DHT and genetics. So get your foundations right. Use proven regrowth methods if you want, but if your hairline is still cooked, you might need to get on DHT blockers. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below what you want me to cover next. Until next time.